Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be creating our third mini project, which is based around loops. Now, in this project, we are going to be learning about loops, what they are, and how we can use them inside of our games. And then using that knowledge, we are gonna be creating a star system that gets randomly generated in position and size, as you can see here. Now, let's hop over into Godot and have a look at how we can start. So to begin, we are first of all going to be creating a new 2D scene because this is of course gonna be a uh, 2D project. So we'll create that there. I'm gonna rename this to be called main, our root node. And down in the file system, I'm gonna create a new folder called loops, okay? And this is where we're gonna store all of the assets relating to this project. So we can then save our scene, go to the loops folder here, and I'm gonna save this as loops.tscn, there we go. So now in the loops folder, we have that scene saved. And in the course files tab, there should be a downloadable zip file, which contains the assets for this uh, course. Now extract that content, and inside you should see a loops project folder, and inside of that is a star sprite. So we're gonna click and drag that into our file system to import it, drag that into the loops folder, and this is basically the star that we are gonna be using. But we're not going to be uh, working with any sprites or visuals just yet. First of all, we need to actually understand what loops are and how we can create them. So on our main root node here, I'm gonna create a new script called loops.gd. Okay, we'll create that there. And inside of this script, what we're going to do is delete the process function since we won't be needing that and inside of ready is where we are going to be looking at how we can create a loop. Now, what is a loop? Well, basically a loop is useful for if you need to run a piece of code multiple times, okay? You could go ahead and rewrite it, um, you know, line after line, or you could chuck it in a loop and run it, you know, anywhere from one time to a million times. So let's just say we want to print a message to the output here, okay? Let's just say we want to print um, the word hello, okay? Well, we can of course do that, press play, down on the output, it says hello. Now, what if we want to say hello 10 times? Well, you know, we could copy, copy that, paste it, you know, as many times as we need, save it, play, and we can see those messages here. But the problem with that is, you know, it's, it's, it's not a very appealing looking code, and if we want to add or remove, it's gonna be a bit of a hassle. So, instead what we can do is reduce all of this down to only two lines of code, which is going to run this print line as many times as we wish. And to do that, we're gonna write four. We're then going to add in a temporary variable, which we're creating, which we'll just call i. Then we'll go in, and then we enter in a number. So we'll say 10. Add a colon, go to a new line, and then we'll write down the code that we wanna loop 10 times. Save that. We can then press play and down the output, as you can see, it says hello 10 times. Now, what we are doing here is basically when we write four, we are giving a temporary variable here, which is sort of the iteration of the loop, okay? A loop iteration is basically um, once you call a loop, once you run every all the code inside of a loop, that is an iteration. Then it goes on to the next one, then the next one. And we are basically telling this for loop right here that we want to run this 10 times. So basically i is gonna be a number, which right now it's set to zero. We run the loop, we increase it by one, so it's now one, run it again, two, run it again, so on and so forth until it reaches 10. So what we can do is replace hello with just the i variable here, okay? We can run that instead, and you'll see down here in the output, it says zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that basically is showing us that every time we run this loop, it is going to increase i by one, then run it again. Now, we can do pretty much anything we want with this. We can increase the number to, let's just say, a thousand. So we are running this print line a thousand times. Play that. And as you can see in the output here, it is going all the way up to 1000, which is pretty cool. So you can imagine all the interesting things you can do with a for loop then. For example, if you're in a game, um, you can use a for loop to spawn in hundreds of enemies at once, okay? You don't have to go through specify line by line, I wanna spawn an enemy here, 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 here. You could just use a for loop. 
And it's also important to note that this for loop runs within one single frame, okay? Um, so for example, if I then go to a new line outside of the for loop and print the word uh, complete, what you'll notice is that this for loop will run a thousand times, then it will go onto the next line of code. So if I run this here, you can see the output goes all the way up to a thousand, then it says complete, okay? Um, so it is important to note that with a for loop, it doesn't run it once, then continue on with the rest of the function code. Rather, it runs everything inside the for loop, however many times you have iterated here, and then it moves on with the rest of the code. So as a bit of a challenge between now and the next lesson, what I want you to do is I want you to create a variable here. So we'll just create a variable here called score. It'll be equal to zero. And what I want you to do is I want you to create a for loop that loops 10 times and it increases score by five every iteration of the loop. And then afterwards, I want you to print out the final result of score. So have a go at that and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to begin uh, starting on our actual star system uh, scene. But first, I left you off with a challenge, and that was to create a variable called score, which increases by 5 10 times, and then print out the result. So for this, I'm going to create a variable called score equals 0, and then we're going to create a for loop, which is going to loop 10 times. And every iteration of the loop, we want to increase score by 5. So score plus equals 5. And then at the end, we want to print out the result. And if we press play, we should see that the result is 50. Okay, so that was just a little challenge right there for you. Um, now let's get started on actually making our star system. So first of all, I'm just going to delete the code here, add and pass, so it adds a little bit of filler. Then we're going to go back to our 2D viewport right here, and we are going to be creating our star scene. Okay, so pretty much, I'm just going to drag in the star.png, and I'm going to set its position to be 0 on the x, 0 on the y. I'm going to rename this to then also be, I'm then going to rename this one to be star. And then we can drag this in to loops and save it as star. Okay, so it's going to be a nice simple scene. We can then delete that there because we don't need it anymore. And what we're then also going to do is create a camera. So I'm going to create a camera 2D. I am going to change its zoom, so it's zoomed in a bit, so we'll change the zoom to about three here. Um, let's just see what it looks like about a star. Yep, okay. Uh, actually, we'll make the zoom two, I reckon. There we go. So we've got our camera here, it's got a zoom. Um, now what we need to do is have a way of randomly spawning in stars. So let's go over to our script here. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is create a variable. I'm going to create two variables. The first one is going to be a variable called spawn count. It's going to be of type int. And we'll make it equal to, let's just say, uh, 200 by default. Now, this is a variable that we'll want to be able to modify uh, outside of the script. You know, we might want to modify it on the fly. So I'm going to add the export tag here, which is going to, if we select our main node, pop up here in the inspector so we can modify as well as this, we also want our, our, our star scene right here because we are going to be spawning in our star scene, so we need access to it inside of the script. And a way to do that is we can create a variable here called star scene, and this is going to be equal to preload. And then what we want to do is basically give the path to this star scene. So you can see there is a little list here of all of the different assets we have. Um, and we just want to find the file path which goes to our star. So loops slash star dot tscn. There we go. And what this is going to do is this is basically going to um, create a reference or a link to the star scene right here and preload it when we start the game so that any time we can spawn it in. Now, how do we go about doing that? Well, down here inside of the ready function, we are going to create a for loop. So I'm going to go for i in. Now, we're not going to enter a number like 100 here. Instead, we are going to write spawn count. So this is going to allow us to modify the amount of times this for loop gets called uh, in the inspector by modifying that spawn count variable. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, instantiate the star scene. Now, instantiate is basically... Uh, another word for spawn, and that's generally what game engines use um, for spawning things in. They call it instantiating. So I'll create a variable called star, and this is going to be equal to star scene 
dot instantiate. And that is going to create ourselves a brand new instance of the star scene. Okay, just like if we were to click and drag it into our scene, that's basically the exact same thing as what we're doing here. What we then need to do is actually add it to our scene tree because if we just spawn it in there, it just exists in memory. Okay, so we need to actually plant it in the physical space. So we are going to go add underscore child and we are going to add star as a child of the root node because remember this script here is attached to our root node so when we write add child that is going to add this instance of star as a child of main. Next what we want to do is give our star a random position. Now to do this we first of all need to know the bounds of our uh, environment here okay so what is the minimum position on the x, the max position on the x and the y that we want to spawn these things in. Well, let's drag in our star scene here. We are going to select it and let's open up the transform here so we can see its position, okay? And as I move it around, you can see it updating. Now, if I drag this down here, okay, this is going to be basically the lowest we want to spawn a star. So that's going to be around 150 on the Y and negative 150 up here, okay? So that's basically a 300 pixel range. And horizontally, that is going to be about, let's just say, uh, we'll say about 280, okay? So 280 here and 280 here. So what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our script and we are going to set a random position. So I'm going to go star dot position dot x equals randy, R-A-N-D-I underscore range. And then here we give it a range um, in terms of a number. So here I'm going to go negative 280 comma 280. Now what I'm doing here is basically accessing the x position of our star and I'm giving it a random integer between negative 280 and positive 280. So that's just going to give us a random number between these two numbers. Now if I save this and I press play, you'll see we get a massive row of stars here. Now they aren't vertical yet because we haven't assigned the vertical y position. It's all at zero, zero. So you can see how they are randomly dispersed across the x axis here. Now we can do the exact same thing for the y axis. And that's going to be star dot position dot y equals randy underscore range. And what was this again? This was, I believe, uh, let's just hop back into 2D here real quick because I actually forgot what the range was. That was going to be, if we open up transform down here, 150. Okay. So this is going to be between negative 150 and positive 150. Save that, press play, and now we can see we have all these random stars in the sky. Now, one thing that we also might want to do is have a random size to these stars, because right now they all look pretty much the same. And in real life, you know, some stars are further back, some are closer, so they can have different sizes, and that can give us a perception of depth. So how do we do it? How do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we are going to create ourselves a variable here called star underscore size. And this is going to be equal to rand f underscore range. And let's just say between 0 0.5 and 1. Now, what rand f is instead of rand i, because rand i is a random integer, rand f is a random float. Okay, so this is going to give us a floating point number between 0 0.5 and 1. And then all we need to do is go star dot scale dot x equals star underscore size and star dot scale dot y equals star size. Okay, we do want the same scale for the x and the y because we don't want our star stretched out, out sideways or vertically. So we can save that, press play, and there we go. We have some stars that are smaller, some that are bigger. We can reload the scene and it's going to be different each and every time because we are using random generation for this. And what we can then do is select our main node here, go over to the spawn count, and let's change it to 1000, for example, and see what happens. Press play, and now we have 1000 stars. And you can see how we can instantly do this, you know, in a single frame and with not a lot of code because we are using loops. And loops allow us to do all of these repeatable operations as many times as we wish, okay? We don't have to write out that um, positioning and scaling code a thousand times line after line. Instead, we can just write it once and loop through it as many times as we need, okay? We can even bump this up to 10,000 maybe, press play, and as you can see, um, the screen gets absolutely covered. Okay, but I'm gonna bring this back down to about, let's just say 500, 
and we are going to keep it at this. Now, one more thing, and that is going to be the background, because right now when I press play, you can see that the background is this gray color. Um, what we could do is go up to project, project settings, then go down to environment and change the default clear color here to be black. Now, if I press play, you'll see that we have a black background and it looks much more like space.